Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Friday. It is October 1st. Sarah's here. We have some housekeeping. We have weather to this calm down. So yes. we'll talk to Justin in a second and a breaking traffic situation. And that is coming up right here on GMSA at 9. But first. First, we want to talk about Scarlett Johansson. OK, do you remember that lawsuit that was happening between her and Disney? Well, apparently they've settled and they're friends again. They worked it out yesterday. Uh, the actress and Disney resolved their dispute of the lawsuit that Johansson filed against Disney back in July. It alleged that Disney breached her contract by releasing Black Widow, a Marvel film starring Johansson on Disney Plus on the same day it was released in theaters. So Johansson said yesterday that she is happy to have resolved our differences and she looks forward to continuing the collaboration with Disney in years to come. However, here's the kicker. Terms of the agreement were not disclosed. Therefore, we want to know how much money we she know. was paid. We do. But uh, apparently this is going to work things out. I mean, we thought maybe that was possible. This was going to be a burn bridge. No more Black Widow. No more Johansson collaborations with Disney. But Alan Bergman, chairman of Disney Studios Content, said they can uh, they appreciate her contributions to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and look forward to working together on a number of upcoming projects, including Disney's Tower of Terror. So get this, Black Widow, when it was released at the box office for opening weekend in North America alone, made $80 million. The film also made $60 million globally on Disney Plus that same weekend. So her salary, as with many actors and actresses, was tied to the film's box office take. And Disney said, at the very least, she made $20 million. But I guess she was expecting to make more if it had made more because the numbers you just said sound a little low to me. Obviously, we're still coming out of a pandemic, yes. but she her contention was emphasis on was it could have been a bigger. So bigger I wonder salary. how much percentage of 60 million she got that made that they made on Disney Plus. I don't know. It remains to be seen. Know. All right. Traffic and weather coming up. But first, here's today's nine at nine. The House is still considering the $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi ruled against a vote Thursday night after hours of negotiations. The House Majority Leader says they'll reconvene this morning. Also today, the White House expects talks about the larger social spending plan to continue. A federal judge will consider the Justice Department's emergency request to block the controversial Texas abortion law during a hearing today. If the judge issues a preliminary injunction, some clinics could resume providing abortions currently covered under the law. There are newly uncovered police records on the Gabby Petito case and the search for her fiance, Brian Laundrie. According to records, officers were called to the Laundrie family home multiple times before Petito was reported missing. That was twice on September 10th and three times on September 11th. The nature of the calls has not been revealed. Today marks the fourth anniversary of the Las Vegas Strip shooting. A gunman opened fire from a hotel down onto a country music festival, killing 60 people and wounding over 400. A number of memorial events are planned in Las Vegas and in California today. This morning, Facebook is under fire for the negative effects social media can have on teens' mental health. During a Senate hearing yesterday, lawmakers grilled a top executive after a report indicated the company was aware of its toxic effect. Facebook argues teens connecting with other teens has an overall positive impact on their mental health. Coppertone is voluntarily recalling five aerosol sunscreens due to the presence of the carcinogen benzene. They include certain lots of SPF 50 pure and simple travel size sports spray and, and sport mineral. The FDA says the products were manufactured between January and June of this year. Food stamp recipients will see their monthly payments go up in October. Benefits will jump an average of 27% above pre-pandemic levels. It's the largest increase in the program's history. The update comes as part of the U.S. Department of Agriculture review of the food stamp program as required under the 2018 Farm Bill. Last night, the White House was covered in pink for National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The tribute will go through 11 tonight. The Breast Cancer Organization says about one in eight women in the U.S. will develop invasive breast cancer over the course of her lifetime. 
Pepsi, the NFL, and Rock Nation have revealed the performers for next year's Super Bowl halftime show. Dr. Dre, Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, and Snoop Dogg will make up the lineup. The big game will be Sunday, February 13th. And that is today's 9 at 9. It was a busy commute this morning with a lot of rain, a lot of accidents. But now the sun's out. It's beautiful at 69 degrees at 9.03 this morning. That's right. And the roads are dry. And it, we had accidents earlier, but nothing quite like this. Here's Stephen Cavazos. That's right. You know, sorry, you, you use the word beautiful, but right now the roads have been looking pretty ugly all morning long. I-10 at the Y. Uh, let's take a closer look here. Uh, we do have an overturned uh, box trailer right now. You can see we have a few folks out there working to take a look and see what's exactly causing this issue or what led to that crash. But uh, this is just past fine silver curve. You can see, obviously, it's going to be a big issue for anybody that's driving through there. There's been at times a number of issues out of this particular hot spot for problems. Uh, right now, this is not pretty good if you're heading out there in in the next few moments as indicated right there on our map. I-35 southbound at I-10. You can see we do have traffic that's already starting to build there along Fine Silver Curve, but a little bit further back. So we've been spotting a lot of crashes out there this morning uh, since basically we started getting the show going a little bit earlier this morning. We did have a crash there of US-90 westbound at Nogolitos that was leading to some big delays. Traffic was at a standstill coming in those eastbound lanes, or actually eastbound, let's just say eastbound to San Antonio, but uh, looks like that has since cleared out. Although we do have another crash that looks like it just popped up right off Malone Avenue. Although the weather looks like it's improving, we've been seeing those issues continue out throughout the morning. A crash just uh, cleared from this system here off I-10 westbound at Woodlawn Avenue. Actually a pretty nice spot there. You can see traffic is moving nice and smooth on those west and eastbound lanes of I-10. Taking a wider look at our map, it's pretty dry right now from what we've been seeing on this road weather map, but a little bit further out, there's still some wet roads out towards Seguin on I-10. A little bit further in, we see some ponding as well. Uh, it has been a very busy morning. We're going to continue to track this particular incident. Again, I-10 at the Y, just past Fine Silver Curve. Keep out for those first responders who are out there working to clear the roadways. Make sure you move over and slow down. But, Justin, I'm glad this didn't happen when it was a little bit outside. Yeah, it, it definitely was damp this morning. There was a lot of puddles on the roadways. Those storms came in a little bit earlier than expected, around 3 a.m. or so, and now they're out of here. So we are saying goodbye to the rain for now. There still are some more chances as we get into the afternoon. Let's look at the radar. We'll show you where the rain is. The, the heaviest core of rain is down there around Port Lavaca along the Texas coast. Still seeing a few showers around Gonzales and out towards Howitzville as well. In fact, some pretty heavy rain moving through the city of Howitzville at this hour. That is tracking north. And then you have more light rain moving through Gonzales and Luling, moving away from San Antonio. Nice cluster of rain down along the coast. That's going to stick around for a while. And I would imagine there's going to be some flooding issues down there. Still some flood advisories in spots, but no flash flood warning. So that's uh, that's good news. Let's uh, look at the temperatures. 70, 70 at the airport, 69 Randolph, 69 New Braunfels, 66 in comfort. You can see some of the clouds moving out. And uh, if you're heading out to some of the football games tonight, look, I think it's probably going to be okay. There could be some storms popping up, though. So just be prepared for that. Uh, about 30 to 40 percent chance. Temperatures at kickoff 82, halftime 79. Sunset is about 719. Forecast for today. We'll uh, keep rain chances low. They'll start to ramp up a little bit. 3 p.m. to about 5 p.m. We'll call for a 40% chance of rain. Hit or miss type stuff. That'll be the case tomorrow, too. And then we say goodbye to the rain for a while. We get some pretty nice weather. We'll jump into that seven-day forecast for you. Get you set for your weekend, too, coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Justin, thank you. Top stories we're following for you this morning. Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh has tested positive for COVID-19. Kavanaugh, who is fully vaccinated, tested positive last night. The court said in a statement he tested positive during a routine test ahead of an investiture ceremony for Justice Amy Coney Barrett. The court also said he has no symptoms and Justice Kavanaugh's immediate family has tested negative. Back here at home, San Antonio police say they have caught up with a man who kidnapped a woman from Brackenridge Park and sexually assaulted her. They arrested 29 year old Brandon Alexander Garcia yesterday. The arrest affidavit says a woman told police she was jogging in the park near Mulberry and Avenue A Monday morning. She says a man forced her into his car at gunpoint, took her to his home and sexually assaulted her. The woman says her attacker later dropped her off at home. The affidavit says surveillance cameras captured images of Garcia's car and that is how police linked him to the crime. 
Well, those behind on their electric bills could see the lights go out starting today. CPS Energy is set to resume disconnections following a pause due to the pandemic. The San Antonio Water System says it will begin water disconnections on October 19th. Final notices have just begun going out. SAWS and CPS Energy encouraging customers to get on a payment plan to avoid disconnections. CPS Energy says nearly 72,000 residential customers are currently behind on their payments. In your other morning headlines, going to take you to where no man has gone before, and it's not outer space, and another volcano is erupting. Saving giant sequoias and why a man is walking over 1,000 miles. David Sears is here. Good morning, David. Morning. Doing it for his daughter. Oh. And we'll tell you why in just a second. But first, let's get to this. You are smack dab in the middle of a hurricane out in the middle of the ocean. Caution, don't stare at this video too long because you might just get a little seasick. You're on board the Sail Drone Explorer SD 1045. There is no crew. The hurricane is called Sam, and this footage is when Sam was a Cat 4 in the Atlantic. 50 foot waves, 120 mile an hour winds. When this video was taken, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, says this is a first. There are actually five sail drones. They were specifically designed to sail into hurricanes and gather all kinds of data so scientists and meteorologists can learn more about the physical makeup and development of hurricanes. The information that they get, they're able to gather, and they are very critical information because it's in the process of forecasting storms, which in turn will help those folks along coastal communities. By the way, Sam is still in the Atlantic, a long way away from land, though. And if that was not spectacular enough, there is this. That is a volcano erupting in Hawaii. This eruption started happening Wednesday. This is video from yesterday, the Kilauea volcano. The volcano has been quiet for the last few months, but woke up this week. There were lava fountains as high as 100 feet. The scientist who monitored the volcano says the lava has been confined to the crater. So as of now, there is no danger of lava flows threatening nearby structures. There could be some dangers from the volcanic gas and even rocks getting blown out of the volcano, though. And of course, it has turned into a tourist attraction. A lot of folks admiring the natural phenomena. All right, let's take it to Sequoia National Park. You are close to losing more wonders of the world. Some of the giant sequoia trees, fires getting very close to this. The fire crews are doing what they can to save the giants. They are putting some fire protection wrap around the base of the trees. Not far away, firefighters are battling several complex fires. One of the trees that is wrapped is the biggest of the big. It's called the General Sherman. The closest that the KMP complex fire got to the General Sherman tree was about 125 yards. And that spot occurred on September 19th, 2021. One of the reasons that the fire didn't get any closer was crews were actually quickly able to actually contain that spot fire because of the recent fire history within the giant forest. And the Park Service has conducted prescribed burns in Sequoia National Park for more than 50 years to reduce the vulnerability of those massive trees. Let's hope they save them this time. And finally this morning, meet Chris Brannigan. He is walking and walking and walking some more. Chris is walking 1,200 miles for a great cause to raise money and awareness about a rare disease that is afflicting his daughter. It's a genetic condition called Cornelia de Lang syndrome. It affects her growing and causes seizures. Chris is trying to raise three and a half million He's on his way. So far, he's raised 1.2 million. He says that parents like him need to go out and do these kind of crazy things so money can be raised for treatments for these rare diseases. So we got to hand it to him and hand it to all the folks that are um, helping him out with some donations. And oh, by the way, speaking of diseases, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So once again, this month, pulled out all the pink ties. Didn't know I had so many pink ties. I think I can get every day this month without doubling up on pink ties. So I'm going to do it because uh, I have family, friends, who have uh, dealt with breast cancer. And of course, all you folks out there who know somebody or you are dealing with breast cancer, we, uh, we are thinking about you for the entire month. So we'll wear a pink tie every day. 30 more to go. Yeah, 30 more to go. All right, thank you very <laughs> thank much, you, David. David. Right now it's 912, about 69 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at nine. A new addition to our KSAC Kids segment as kiddos ask questions and learn from experts. 
Good morning. We're live from SAISD Foundation's Book Buddies program. Can you believe that one day soon this year, all of these books that you see here are going to land in the hands of SAISD students? Just ahead on GMSA at 9, all the details and especially how you can help at home. It's exactly 916 on your Friday. Welcome back. Every year, SAISD Foundation's Book Buddies program provides tens of thousands of children's books to students in the San Antonio Independent School District. So they just received another massive donation. But here's the thing. They need many more volunteers to help sort through those books. Our Alicia Barrera is live from their headquarters located at Port San Antonio, just off Highway 90 and Southwest 36th Street. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, you guys. Well, let me tell you, last year they had 45,000 books total donated for the students. And then this year, the goal has more than doubled, and I believe it's going to sit at about 92,000. So every Saturday, they're going to need a lot of help from volunteers to sort books like these. So joining me this morning is Carrie Smith, and she's going to kind of tell us about, uh, you know, how the sorting works if you want to come out and volunteer. What's the big goal to reach for students? Over the summer, we were with y'all with Jumpstart Book Buddies, yes, yeah. and, and y'all are giving these books out for free for the students. Yes, we are. So our goal this year is to deliver books to 45 campuses in SAISD, which, like you said, totals to about 92,000 books, and that's a huge goal. So we need a lot of volunteers to come help us out. And what volunteers do when they come on a Saturday is just like Alicia's doing is fill up their bucket of books, bring it over to their sorting table, All right, we'll and place sort right out here. by grade level. So we'll do pre-K through second grade, third through fifth grade and sixth through eighth grade and they have it all written out for the volunteers so if you can't remember that like me no worries they have a little <laughs> cheat sheet here and so after they're cleaned then they're packed in a box and how does that process right. work right so they're they're counted and after they're sorted they're counted in box and then they're put onto pallets we build the pallets to send those out to the campuses mm -hmm. our SAISD facilities team will come and pick them up and take them to the campus and they will, the librarian will schedule a book celebration and the kids will get to pick out their four books. So these four pallets that we see here, it's about four or five. They each ha have a magic green sticky note. Right. These are headed where and when? These are going to Cotton Academy next okay. week. And then we have um, Bowden and Washington. So those are ready to go. So on your screen, we want to put the details for if you want to come out and volunteer. They need help every Saturday without missing a beat, 10 a.m. to noon. So it's a pretty easy shift to do. And that way you can help give back and get these books in the hands of students who just want to read more and fall in love with it. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you so much, Alicia. Spot at my favorite book in there, Harry Potter. There you go. Thanks, Alicia. Quick update on traffic, folks. We want to take you back out to the notorious Feinsilver Curve. This is a large box truck that flipped over. And we want to tell you now that part of the Feinsilver Curve is closed. You cannot go from I-35 South to I-10 West. But you see that giant King Kong wrecker is there on the scene. They're going to work as fast as they can, but these things typically take some time. But we'll keep an eye on that for you again. Part of Feinsilver Curve is closed. Uh, 35 South to I-10 West is currently inaccessible. You see some of the traffic has been diverted down to the frontage road below by that yellow house. I just saw a big rig, but traffic's going to be heavy in that area. And Justin, I mean, this morning you were out in Storm Chaser. Mm -hmm. It got pretty intense at one point, but it looks like, are we in the clear for most part of it? I know people were really yeah. concerned about Friday night football. I think that we are. There will be some storms around for Friday Night Football, but it won't be widespread. It won't be like what we saw this morning where there's a big complex of showers and storms and it's super widespread. There will be some pop-up stuff later today, but we are done with the rain for the next couple of hours for sure. We're going to get a break in the action. I want to show you a great picture out of Lavernia where uh, this rain gauge looks like you know, they picked up about five and a half inches. That's uh, from Kathy. She says free water last night and this morning. It sure was. There was a lot of it in spots and and that kind of jives with what we're seeing down there in Elmendorf and Lavernia, St. Hedwig, some pretty big numbers. 4.16 is what we saw down there in Elmendorf. Earlier this morning, there were some good numbers out around Del Rio, Brackettville, and parts of southwestern Uvalde County where we picked up over two inches. And that came pretty quickly, so there were some flash flood warnings there. And then the other big totals were on the south side of Bear County and then parts of Wilson County and up towards Guadalupe County. St. Hedwig, 2.26 inches. Sutherland Springs, 2.394. Floresville, 3.18. 
So that's some really healthy rainfall. And these are kind of some areas that didn't get as much rain with that first wave on Tuesday. So we're kind of spreading the wealth here and that's that's great. It's been a pretty good week for us rain wise. Not a lot of severe weather, just some good solid rain. And we're still seeing that down along the coast. So Port Lavaca down towards Rockport, northeast of Corpus Christi, still some rain falling at this hour, still some lightning strikes. And the bigger picture here shows that yes, the rain is moving away. Gonzales, still a little bit of light rain there, and we did notice some heavier rain around Howitzville, but that is starting to uh, let up a little bit too. So things will quiet down some this morning. There's the scene outside, 70 degrees at the airport, mostly cloudy skies, and temperatures are in the 60s and 70s for the most part. Some rain cooled air, 66 in Rock Springs, 72 in Del Rio. And the satellite picture shows we do have some breaks in the clouds behind this shield of rain, so there will be some sun throughout the afternoon and that may destabilize the atmosphere a little bit more this afternoon. Once we get some of that heating, our upper level low still sits off to the west there. So there still was a little bit of lift and that continues into tomorrow as well. As far as the risk for flooding rainfall, we still have a slight risk here around San Antonio today. Again, I think a lot of that is starting to shift away with this heavier stuff that we saw this morning by midday today. Just some spotty showers, if that, and then by the afternoon, you'll see some pop up showers and storms, but not widespread activity. And then by tomorrow, same story, we'll see uh, some pop up showers and storms during your day on uh, during the day on Saturday, but it shouldn't uh, maybe interfere with your plans that much. Just keep the case that weather app with you, keep the radar with you and keep an eye on the sky. And after Sunday, by the way, or after Saturday, the rain chances go away. 88 Sunday, partly cloudy, and we're going with a 40% chance of rain on Saturday, by the way. And then next week, less humid temperatures right around 90. Some pretty nice weather to start next week, guys. Thank you, Justin. KSAC Kids announcing a new partnership with Noun, an educational platform that provides engaging content online for both students and teachers. The partnership offers fun, engaging videos where students explore subjects through live interviews with experts and celebrities. Interviews are recorded, animated, and then released as episodes. This morning we're kicking things off with a map expert. Check it out. Are maps made out of like a special fabric or paper? Both. Uh, paper prior to the, let's say the year 1750 was handmade. Um, are any of you wearing jeans? Any of you wearing a cotton t-shirt today? Yeah. So most maps are made out of the same material as the clothes that you're wearing. They're made out of cotton and linen and they would have been hammered and they would have been made into a pulp that would have been produced and, and produced a paper. Those papers are very, very stable and they last a long time. Student-led, kid-certified learning. Yay! Yay! Uh, good yay! So, <laughs> so it's kind of cool. Let us know if you want to bring Noun to your school or classroom to take part in an interview. I love this. The animated class interviews will be shown online and may also be seen in future newscasts. Just head to ksat.com for more information. Right now it is 924, about 70 degrees. So today marks Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary still ahead on GMSA at 9. More on the big celebrations happening today. To mark the Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary milestone, iconic locations in each park are bathed in iridescence. Iridescent was a really important choice to us because it incorporates all the colors that are iconic to all the major influence with Disney from the last 50 years. Here in the Magic Kingdom, there's a new enchantment light show. It stretches from Cinderella's Castle all the way down Main Street. At Animal Kingdom, there's a new stage show called Kite Tales. And over at Epcot, the new Harmonious Nighttime Show. You're going to see a brand new spectacle come to life here at Epcot, and it's going to bring the entire world together through Disney music. Plus the new Remy's Ratatouille Adventure Ride. Guests are going to be, you know, employ every one of their senses. All of that combines into making you feel like you're immersed in the film that we've today only seen on screen. And coming soon, the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind Roller Coaster. It is going to be one of the world's longest enclosed roller coaster systems. 
and across all four parks, there are 50 different gold character statues. A true Disney fan will try and get a photo with all of them. And you can join the celebration tonight with a primetime special called The Most Magical Story on Earth, 50 Years of Walt Disney World. The two-hour show, hosted by Whoopi Goldberg, takes a look back at the park's history. Plus, there are celebrity surprises and musical performances from Christina Aguilera and Halle Bailey. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. A teenage girl has turned a used delivery truck into a mobile coffee shop so she can save money for college. That's the story still ahead. Well, we are getting ready for another big football weekend from high school to the pros. David and RJ right over there with what to watch this weekend, starting off with week six of the high school football wow. season. Week Already six. week six. Seems like we just got started. Mm -hmm. Weird, mm -hmm. weird yeah. weekend because a lot of the schools are having their bye week this week. Yeah, so. it's a it's, so a couple of schools having a bye week, but then we also have a lot of district play. So yeah. we're right now in the mix of it. You know what? October weather starts to turn a little bit. These games mean a little bit more. So a lot of excitement about this. So some of the coaches call it the nitty gritty. Can get down to the nitty gritty now. We're in district play. <laughs> I like that with a little uh, little Texas twang there. Yeah. Wow. Speaking of the uh, the nitty gritty here, we got Brack versus Sam Houston. That's That'd the game that right David here. and I are going to yeah. be at uh, later today at Alamo Stadium. Going Seems to like the rock pile. There we go. Seems like the weather is going to cooperate here. Uh, Brack is one of the leaders in that district. Uh, four and one. They're undefeated in district. Sam Houston. Always a good rivalry here between you, these two schools. You just put the pressure on Justin. I said, what? what? Weather's going to cooperate, right? I said, the weather that? looks yeah. like it's going to cooperate. If RJ says it, it means it's going to happen. Oh, 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 wow, look at that. He just threw that right back at me. All right, so, we're, so we should be pretty in good shape for tonight, right, Justin? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Highlands of Bourbon. <laughs> I'll be another good one that's down there at the SAISD Sports Complex. Mm -hmm. Look at a couple of other games. Like I said, some are off this week because of bye, but check out some of the other games. Look at that. Madison and Reagan. Reagan in a fight for the district title and Johnson and Churchill. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be a good old fashioned barn burner there. Definitely. We saw Johnson what, play last week. I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> if you were a little more hoarse, you'd sound like former uh, Jetson coach Jim Brackley. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No, he's got a, yeah. I don't well, know. You know, half these coaches can't talk anymore. They're done. They're done. They just like they've yelled and screamed their voice right out. So they got nothing left. <laughs> yes. Uh, so maybe the coach is in need of a bye week too. Uh, yeah. Warren and Taft here. The Taft Raiders are still unbeaten. And uh, Justin's favorite quarterback there, Justice Hurt, leading the Raiders Justice. against the Warren Warriors. <laughs> and then uh, a good game across the street, Central yeah. Catholic. This is actually a district game, David, for the Buttons against Houston St. Thomas. That's a long way to go for a district game, I'm, but, you know, I'm going they're to, coming here. And we're I'm not going, going to Taft Warren tonight. I'm going to check it oh, out. Oh, are you? Yep. Awesome. I'll be there. Yeah. Justice Hurt? Mm-hmm. Justice Hurt, yeah. There you go. Uh, Taft's got a really, really good team, so I'm really, really interested to see how that game plays out. Uh, yeah. All right, good let's times. get to some college football. Texas is trying to continue rolling after rolling all over Texas Tech last week. They got oh, TCU boy. this week, but they are in. And this is, I told Larry Ramirez earlier this week, be so glad when they play another game this weekend so they can be showing this stuff. Because I'm really getting sick of this. I've, I've had enough of this Texas it hurts. Tech, Texas yeah. highlight. This burns. Yeah. yeah. So show some TCU Let's next burn week. This memory. So they got TCU. They're in. They're in Fort Worth. So in Fort Worth. This is always a tough game for Texas, and I know a lot of people are split on this. Texas is favorite to win this game, so that game kicks off on uh, KSAT 12 tomorrow at 11 a.m. But the problem with Texas in this game mm -hmm. is it could be a trap game because that. Yeah, you know they're thinking ahead to Oklahoma next week, mm -hmm. right? So you don't want you don't want to fall into that uh, thinking ahead trap. So you got to be got to be careful with TCU. This well, week. they lost yeah. to they lost to SMU. TCU, TCU did. did. So, yeah, so, oh, she's Sarah's smiling over there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think Texas got has SMU got a good plug. chance. <laughs> All right. Um, so also you got A and M and Mississippi mm -hmm. State. I don't know where Justin's going to be on that. Where are you going to be, Justin? I don't know. Okay, that's not what we're watching. After last week. And, and, and then UTS. Wow, man. Man, Justin's UTS. lost. I'm going to at least watch the first five minutes. They lost one game, game, man. I don't know my schedules on the weekend. I, but how about these guys game. right here? UTSA going after a history-making fifth win in a row to yeah. start the season yeah. at 5-0. and oh, And they're hosting a uh, team that's played some tough teams. UNLV. Comes into uh, San Antonio 0-4. Mm -hmm. oh yeah, UNLV. So. This game's going to be at the Dome. It's going to be tomorrow at 5 o'clock. So expecting a pretty good crowd out there. I know Coach Trailer has been out there. He's giving out Whataburger to the students the other day. Doing wow. all sorts really? of uh, radio hits. and all, Yeah, he was giving out Whataburger to the students <laughs> on campus the if other I'd day. If I'd have known that, I'd have put on like he a gone to a shirt and gone out there and just kind of hung around. <laughs> David's cool with being uh, an undergrad again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, One more kids. time. Yeah. 
I could do that. I could have um, that. Coach Trailer, a guy who's like we were talking about voices. He's probably lost his a little bit, but he's definitely yeah. got that Texas uh, that Texas coach talk so down wish, a little bit. Wish those guys all the best <laughs> on Saturday night at five. That's a good time for a kickoff because you go down there and get you some snacks, get you some dinner, enjoy yeah. some football, and you still got time later to go out and enjoy the evening, enjoy mm-hmm. a victory. Uh, real quick on Sunday, the Cowboys are hosting Carolina. Carolina undefeated at 3-0, but the Cowboys coming off that huge win against Philadelphia. And then the Texans are at Buffalo. Yeah, Good and we just there. saw um, right here, Trayvon Diggs was named the NFC Player of the Month. Yep. Interceptions in the first three games of the season. Uh, that hasn't been done since Everson Walls, David, for the Cowboys. Up against, well, remember the sign in the, in the old Texas Stadium? They used to have the sign for Everson Walls that up against the wall. Mm, yes. yes. Yeah, that's an iconic the, the player. Uh, Cowboys, that years. game kicks off at noon, and also Texans yeah. at Buffalo. Uh, good luck, Houston. <laughs> and uh, by the way, Larry Ramirez is going to that game on Sunday. Yeah. She'll have all the highlights and all the uh, post game for you from that uh, Cowboys game on Sunday night. In this A lot of stuff. Awesome. RJ, David, thank right. you guys for the previews. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, guys. Let's take a look outside with live cam. 71 degrees, shaping up to be a beautiful day after we had that kind of bumpy start Justin with a lot of rain yeah and, and if it does rain for one of the uh, high school football games tonight you can send your emails to our Marquez at <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Dang. Just kidding. Uh, there, there is a chance for a couple of storms hopefully they're few and far between I want to show you the pollen count real quick molds are high 3620 uh, fall elm ragweed both moderate 140 and 100 so our fall allergens are Still up there. Looks like we lost our KSAC Connect picture. We'll bring it up here in just a second. But we've been getting in a lot of pictures from viewers. So the, the morning rain and the cloud cover, that is moving away. We're seeing things clear out. We're going to get a break in the action, at least until the afternoon. That's when we could start to see a little bit more showers uh, showers and storms starting to pop up. 70 Canyon Lake, 71 Divine, 71 in Uvalde. Partly cloudy skies at the moment. And forecast does call for a 40% chance for rain around 5 o'clock. We'll get those temperatures back up into the mid 80s this afternoon with northwesterly winds 5 to 15 guys. Thank you very much, Justin. Big detour in the downtown area. I 35 South is closed at I 10 West just pound past the fine silver curve due to this overturned box truck. The wrecker is out there on the scene. Slow going, getting getting this cleaned up. But again, just past fine silver curve headed to I 10 West right now. It is just about 939 71 degrees. You're watching GMSA at nine and this month. A new spooky season of Texas Eats is coming out next. David Elder, he's in the building. He'll be joining us in studio to talk about what we can expect. 942, you ready for this? Well, we all love food, but mm-hmm. what happens when it's combined with spooky places and our favorite local foodie? We, of course, are talking about the David Elder. Big deal. He joins us in studio to talk about a brand new season of Texas Eats. Yes. Okay, so you're talking about it being super spooky. It's <laughs> so I want to know how were you able to find so many haunted restaurants? We're in Texas. There are there just happens to be like a lot of haunted restaurants out. There's so much history out here. Yes. I mean, it was a wild frontier not that long ago. So there's just a lot of really interesting stuff that happened. And all these restaurants that we're going to go visit here in the new season, they have really interesting stories. And you know, one of the, well, the ones we visited right here, we were in Floresville. Uh, this place is genuinely haunted. This is Fluff's White House, and we got to go visit. He get, we get the ghost tour. So every one of these places that we visit here on the show, you get half a ghost. You get the ghost, ghost tour on the first half, restaurants and food on the second half. Right. Okay, so we're giving you the full deal. <laughs> Don't look in that mirror, okay, because you'll get cursed. I, I should have said that before we turn. Oh. The- <laughs> oh, did you look in the mirror? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're cursed now, so uh, don't do that. But you're gonna learn more about it. This is actually gonna be airing next week. So tomorrow, we have two other haunted restaurants that we're gonna be checking out. But we have them throughout the month of October. Let's hope you can get to go. I mean, if it's truly haunted, you should, you will, right? <laughs> yeah, the food's worth it. And we wanted to make sure about that. So the food matches up with the scary factor. So it's great food and it's a lot of fun, which is exactly what we wanna do here on Texas Eats. What about fair food? Fair food, man, we got to go up to Dallas. Ooh. The state fair is happening till October 14th. And you can head on out there. So we had to go check out all the tasty stuff. Look at this. I actually had people were like, oh, I watch your show oh, online so cool. when we were up there in Dallas. Oh, that's pretty cool, dude. It is cool. And uh, we got the bucket of cookies. 
We got to ride some rides. I did some whoa, fair whoa, whoa. stuff. Oh, yeah. Bucket of cookies? It's a bucket of cookies. There's a Hallelujah, lot of Jesus. rides. Look at this. I mean, I don't even know. I don't remember eating that. I don't even, I don't, that, that. <laughs> you don't remember there was so that. much food. I mean, it just, it was insane how much stuff. This right there, that's a deep fried lobster tail. Ooh. Was that gravy they were putting on it? Champagne gravy. Stop. Oh, yeah. Do you want to know the ticket price of that one? You want yes, to sir. Yes. $60. Are you kidding no. me? I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. And I asked the guy, like, I was like, okay, how many of these do you sell? And he was about 2800 a year, like every time they have. 2800 I was like, I need to get in the deep fried lobster tail business because that is making some good money. But you guys, we have an exciting new season. Now, the Halloween season, of course, is happening in October. We also have Dia de los Muertos happening at the end of the month. Plus, we have all kinds of Thanksgiving content, holiday content going into December. And you guys, we're going to be loading it up. It's just going to be fun, fun, fun. And I'm excited because you're going to be joining us every Saturday. Yes, I'm back. MSA with back, Max baby. Massey and Sarah Spivey. Before we go, what was the scariest thing you encountered during your ghost? It's tour? actually tomorrow. So we put the scariest stuff into the first show that we put on. And we it's actually really scare people. But we have like the scariest thing we say for the, for the end. So we want to make sure. But um, stuff moves on its own. No, you did not see it. No, we actually we hear stuff, mm -hmm. and I'm not. Look, I'm not. I'm not a ghost believer. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't go around saying. Okay, am, so Sarah is. But I legitimately saw things I shouldn't have seen. Yeah. And I'm a little bit traumatized about it. I used to. <laughs> that place was haunted, man. Was David, haunted. I used to do behind the kitchen door, so I can relate. <laughs> That's a different kind of haunting. Yeah, right. That's a haunting that follows you in your stomach later after yeah, sure. you eat some weird stuff. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, it is, if you enjoy scary things, I mean, it's for the whole family. It's very fun. And we also have a lot of delicious food. But uh, new show, new season starts tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning right here on KSAT 12. Congratulations, David. Very Thank you. excited. Thanks Thank for having you so me. Thanks so much, guys. David. See you this weekend. Okay, we are now going to talk to Justin Horn and uh, a lot of talk about, seems like we went for a little while there without any rain. And then, of course, now it's back. Well, you know, that's how we operate here mm -hmm. in South Texas, right? We go these long stretches and then boom, we get some good rain. That's what we've had this week because September really was dry up until we got to the 28th and 29th. And that's when we had that overnight rainfall and we picked up 1.61 on Tuesday, 0.62 on Wednesday. And now obviously we're into October and we've picked up a little bit of rain this morning. Not as much as we would have liked at the airport, but good totals nonetheless. And you look for the year where 26.09 we're now over an inch above average we had fallen below average if you remember so this is a good spot and uh, hopefully we'll see some more intermittent rain as we grow throughout the rest of fall the aquifer one to check in there too it's up a tenth of a foot 658.9 we continue to rise here and that number should come up a little bit more in the coming days there's look at the rain it is moving out we're seeing showers and storms push east still some Decent rain around Gonzales, at least light rain, and moving out of Howlettsville now in the Schulenburg. So really, most of our viewing area is getting the chance to dry out. And along the Texas coast, there's some heavy rain down there too. Sun is out here in San Antonio, and temperatures at 70 degrees. 73 Stinson, 71 Kelly, 69 Randolph, and northeast Julie winds. The cloud cover, we're still going to have some passing clouds from time to time today. And the temperatures will eventually make their way into the 80s with some sun out there. 71 in Uvalde, 73 Catula, 70 in Kennedy. A little bit more cloud cover, obviously, still with some lingering clouds and rain across our eastern counties. Dew point tracker. It is going to be humid today and tomorrow. But as we get into next week, we're going to enjoy some drier weather. That means cooler mornings, nice afternoons points in the 40s and 50s it'll be great so we went from a dry week to a really wet week and now we're going to go back to the dry week uh, looking at our forecast as far as rain goes today i think a couple of showers around noon that's it by five o'clock we may start to see some more showers and storms redevelop especially out west places that get a little more daytime heating you'll see the atmosphere destabilize and we'll get some more activity to pop up that's why we're saying high school football is going to be good for the most part, but we can't rule out some of these pop up showers and storms overnight tonight. Not looking for much. And if you have plans this weekend, this particular model isn't uh, isn't too positive about uh, rain tomorrow. I mean, there are going to be some spots here and there, but I don't think we're going to see a, a big shield of rain like what we saw this morning. So uh, expect just some scattered to isolated showers and storms on your Saturday. And then after that, the rain really clears out. So 40% chance tomorrow, or 40% chance today, I should say, 40% chance tomorrow, mid-80s both days. And then by Sunday, maybe a shower in the morning, but otherwise partly cloudy, 88. 89 Monday, 89 Tuesday, but it's the morning lows that are going to feel so good. 
62 Wednesday morning, 63 Thursday morning. Next week should be really nice, guys. You ready for less humid? Yes. Me too. So good. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. About 10 till, about 71 degrees. Well, a 20-year mission to buy back a car and a teen wheels and deals. Starting your own business is safe for college. That's coming up in today's Take a Look at This. A man's desire for a trip down memory lane goes the distance over two decades. This as he is efforts to get his late mother's beloved car back in the family. CNN Jeremy's Roth has today's Take a Look at This. If you love something, let it go. Well, John Barry of Kentucky must not believe in that old chestnut because he loved his late mother's lime green Cutlass Supreme convertible so much that he went on a decades long mission to get it back. The car was sold shortly after Barry's mother died when he was 15. I remember my mom getting in, putting the top down, putting a scarf around her head and putting her sunglasses on and going for a ride. Barry says memories like these inspired him to track down the new owner, a man in Michigan. And for about 20 to 22 years, I stayed in contact with that gentleman. Finally, after decades of patience and persuasion, the man agreed to sell the Cutlass back to Barry, whose reunion with it yielded even more surprises. In the glove box was a pair of my mom's sunglasses, uh, some papers that she had uh, written maps on, and, uh, and some earrings. And it's been just exciting, it's been sentimental, and it's brought back a lot of memories for me. From all the feels on wheels to wheelin' and dealin' for higher education. That's what this enterprising 15-year-old girl in Alaska is doing. With dreams of going to college, sophomore Kaylee Ricard Ramos turned a used delivery truck into a mobile coffee shop in Anchorage. And then I was like, oh, well, my grandparents have this truck that just sits there all the time. And I was like, you know, I worked in a cafe before, and I was like, why can't I just do that myself? She did exactly that and is on her way to fulfilling her dream one tasty beverage at a time. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Okay, quick update on Transguide, and it looks like they're having trouble figuring yeah. out how to get this thing upright. It looked like a box truck, and it may still be, but it looks like the box has either separated from the truck or it was a container truck, and that came off in their efforts. So this is taking quite a long time. They now have two of those wreckers out there. This is on the fine silver curb, just past the curb, 35 South to I-10 West, gonna be closed for a while, Justin. Yeah, yeah be I would careful out there. That's gonna cause residual issues around downtown, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the way around. Uh, the rain has moved out. We're seeing some sun now. A few more pop-up showers and storms are possible later this afternoon. Won't be as widespread as what we saw this morning. Justin, do you us remember us doing a story about a month ago about some zebras on the run? They yes, broke out in, uh, in Virginia, Maryland. 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 Yeah, David Sears did it as a story. Yeah, and a month later, they're still on the run. Oh yeah, they are. A month after escaping from a farm in Maryland, five zebras have evaded capture and are continuing to ramble across the wilds of suburban Prince George's County, eking out a living on territory far from the grasslands of East Africa. And get this, so there has been no shortage of sightings. They've become kind of like the celebrities of the area. Uh, they were spotted in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, about 20 miles southeast of Washington. Um, and they're, it's like a whole thing. If you see them, you post them on social media. Yeah, uh, lead, Linda Pinoy, or mayor of Upper Marlboro, says they have become local, local celebrities. Zebras have been on the run since August 31st when they somehow escaped from a privately owned farm. After they got loose, there was a plan to capture them by luring them into a corral, but they are not going for no, it. No, they have been foiling their efforts week after week. So good luck, zebras. Have a great <laughs> weekend, everybody.